Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me once again here on SJ's classes. This is my final lecture on the poem Rudra Samhara by the Sanskrit poet Kalidasa. I have posted three videos earlier on this particular poem. In the very first video I introduced to you the poet and the dramatist Kalidasa and I also gave you an introduction to this mini epic Rudra Samhara. In the second video, I discussed the first 10 stanzas of Canto 1, Summer. And in the third video, I discussed the next 10 stanzas. So after reading the initial 20 stanzas, we understand that Kalidasa gives us a portrayal of how human and animal world try to survive the summer season. The first tensa, 10 stanzas are a note on how the human world tries to survive this season and the next 10 stanzas portray how the animal world struggles or how the summer season has affected the animal world. How these animals struggle to survive this season. And in the remaining eight stanzas in Canto 1, Kalidasa continues to describe the impact of summer season in the animal kingdom. Let's read the 21st stanza. A herd of female buffaloes frenzied by the thirst. So earlier you saw how antelopes, snakes, lions, Tuskers, peacock, boars, frog, saras cranes, you know, cobras, how they are struggling to cope up with the intense heat of the sun, how thirsty they are and how pathetic their situation is. So in this stanza we see a herd, a group of female buffaloes frenzied by the thirst. Frenzied means agitated emerges from the hills caves, heads lifted up, sniffing for water, spittle overflowing from cavernous jaws and frothing round their lips, pink tongues hanging out. So this is the kind of predicament that the female buffaloes are in. They are frenzied, they are irritated, they are thirsty, they were, you know, trying to escape from the heat of the sun by hiding themselves in hills, caves and finally they emerge they, and they are sniffing for water. They are you know, trying to sense to get some you know, clues regarding whether there are there is water around. And spittle is overflowing from their cavernous jaws. Cavernous means something which resembles a cave. And frothing around their lips. So spittle overflowing. They have frothing formed on their lips and their pink tongues are hanging out. So all these are indicative of the fact that these animals are really thirsty. A raging forest fire burns tender shoots to a cinder. So this is something that you uh, witness or something that comes along with the summer season, forest fire. And Kalidasa now records the presence of a forest fire as well. A raging forest fire, a fire which is very severe, something which is you know, spreading across the forest violently. A raging forest fire burns tender shoots to a cinder. Tender shoots means young shoots. So this forest fire, you know, this forest fire burns young shoots to a cinder. Cinder means ash. So it's destroying everything in its path, the fire. Cruel winds hurl shriveled leaves. Shriveled means you know, having lost all moisture, you know, dried, very dry kind of leaves. Shriveled leaves high up with impetuous force. So the winds, they hurl these you know, dry leaves high up with impetuous force. Impetuous means violent force. 
all around waters shrink to the bottom of the sizzling heat so the river sources you know they become dry because of the intense heat of the season you have this uh, heat being described as sizzling sizzling means intense very intense oh what a scene of horror the woodlands outskirts present so summer season presents us with a completely horrific scene of the forest now there is destruction and devastation all around especially because of the fire and because there is no water the animals you know they are thirsty and the irony is that or the problem is that the water sources have dried up birds sit panting on trees shorn of leaves shorn of leaves means you know, devoid of leaves lean monkeys troop into the ca into caves overgrown with bushes lean monkeys means thin they have become thin because they don't have enough to eat they don't get enough water to drink so lean monkeys troop into caves troop into caves means they go as a troop together they move inside into the caves and these caves are overgrown with bushes wild bulls roam around looking for water so it's not just the antelope or the snake or tuskers or the peacock or the cobra or the female buffaloes uh, which are looking for water you now birds monkeys and bulls are also on the hunt for water elephant cubs diligently drop water from a well so even kids now they take water they sip water diligently you know, with great attention even the kids are careful not to consume too much water now, or else they won't have any left for the future relentlessly driven by the force of violent winds the fire brilliant as the vermilion petals so kalidasa returns to the raging fire again in this stanza relentlessly relentlessly means in a relentless manner you know, without stopping driven by the force of violent winds so this is what you know um helps the fire to continue burning everything that is in its path the violent winds the fire brilliant as the vermilion petals of the mallow rose so the fire is being described as or it is being equated with the vermilion petals vermilion is a reddish orange color vermilion petals of the mallow rose mallow means you know a flower that belongs to the malvaceae family malvaceae is the family to which rose belongs the fire brilliant as the vermilion petals of the mallow rose unfolding speeds in every direction smitten with longing to clasp so the fire is being equated with the color of the rose or equated or the color of fire fire is being equated with the color of rose and kalidasa says that he speeds in every direction this fire he speeds in every direction smitten with longing to clasp smitten with you know affected with a deep feeling so it has this deep feeling to clasp clasp means to hold firmly and tightly so it wants to hold firmly and tightly everything that is in its path it is trying to devour hold tightly grasp and devour everything that is in its path and what is it now what are the things that it grasps the tops of trees bushes and creepers and burns the earth so the spreading of the fire across the you know forest is being figuratively described in this particular stanza it is as if it is moving around smitten with a longing to clasp and it you know uh, makes a cinder out of everything that it sees in the path tops of trees bushes and creepers springing up at the skirts of the woodland the fire's glare tires the creatures of the woodland so again it's the spreading of the fire that is being stated in the stanza as well springing up at the skirts skirts means you know outskirts border places outskirts of the woodland woodland means the forest the fire's glare the glare of the fire it tires the creatures the creatures get tired from the glare of the fire it blazes in the glens glens means a narrow secluded valley so it has also reached the valleys in the woodland 
It blazes in the glens, fanned by the winds, crackles and bursts through dry bamboo thickets. Thickets means a dense growth of bamboos, and spreads in the grass, waxing each moment. Waxing means increasing. So the fire consumes everything on its way: tender shoots, tops of trees, bushes, creepers, valleys, bamboos, and it's like it is almost consuming the entire woodland. Now that is how intense this fire is. Incited by the winds, the wildfire roams on all sides of the woodland, seeming to assume multiple forms in the bright silk cotton groves. So. Frequently, Kalidasa says that this fire is being incited. Now it waxes, it increases because of the wind. Now earlier we read that it is driven by the force of fire and winds. And now we understand that uh, the fire it is still kept alive by the winds. It is uh, the fire spreads around because of the wind. Incited by the winds, the wildfire roams on all sides of the woodland. seeming to assume multiple forms in the bright silk cotton groves so when the cotton trees catch fire it is as if you know um, it blazed so badly that it was like the fire was assuming various shapes multiple forms it glitters burnished gold burnished gold means gold that shines so it glitters glitters like you know burnished gold in the hollows of trees and springs up tall trees to branches whose leaves are singed singed means burned superficially so it consumes everything tall trees its branches leaves everything it burns everything and kalidasa feels like you know it shines like or it glitters like burnished gold with their bodies burning in the fires fierce heat elephants wild bulls lions lay aside their enmity and come quickly out of grasslands scorched by fire together like friends to rest on the river's side sandy banks so this is what the forest fire or the summer season in general has made out of the animals the animals they lay aside their enmity and they have become friends they are doing this probably so that they can you know survive the danger that has befallen them so elephants wild bulls lions you know they all lay aside their enmity now, earlier we saw that snakes and peacocks they have set aside their enmity we also saw that lions and tuskers they have also set aside their enmity and we also saw that uh, frogs and cobras even they have become friends snakes taking you know uh, refuge under a peacock the tuskers not you know uh, being afraid of lions and lions not attacking uh, tuskers even though they are in their reach you know, a frog taking shelter under a cobra's hood we saw this earlier so we understand that the animals have friend more or less like friends oh lady whose singing flows so sweet in the night over the moonlit terraces may summer waited upon by lovely women when pools are strewn, strewn thick with lotuses and the air scented with by padala flowers when waters are pleasant to lace in and garlands of pearls cool with their touch pass in greatest delight and ease for you so kalidasa winds up this canto this is the last stanza so kalidasa winds up this canto with a wish he says it may some be waited upon by lovely women let us wait so that the season will pass now he wishes everyone to have a wonderful time when there is water and flowers all around when there is so much of life and activity around and these you know activity and these life you know this life you know it brings great delight and comfortable life to you it is on such a note that kalidasa winds up the first canto so that brings us end to the discussion of or the the, the discussions on the poem rudasamhara by kalidasa thank you so much for joining me